Now, when you're dating women, what you're going to find is you're going to find that women will routinely disrespect men who do not have side pieces. Now, I understand how crazy that sounds, and I understand how, like, if you're brand new to hearing something like that, it might sound weird, but what you have to understand at a deep level is women only want what other women want, and not only that, women only respect, typically, a man who can generate options for himself, and that includes getting other women. Which means on today's marker board presentation, I'm going to show you strategically how you can leverage this to your advantage and why you have to be willing to be a bit different and take risks and actually break a lot of these social norms that hold most men hostage because these social norms, what happens is your balls get like really shriveled up because like it's got your balls, like you got to understand, like you got to break free from this shit. Like a lot of it is like mental, like fear that guys have. So if you can release that, you're gonna be a lot happier. So let me show you how. After today's video, be sure to go down below, hit the link in the description and check out the MBT Masculine Behavioral Technique webinar because I took it upon myself to put together a full length presentation for you that can transform your life so you can copy MBT into your dating life. You'll get even quicker results. So. Let's dive in. So I'm going to show you step by step why women disrespect men who don't have side pieces. Okay, I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out, okay? First, we gotta look at what happens when a guy enters into a monogamous relationship because when a woman exits your life, okay, I want you to think about this. Any girlfriend you've ever had, some of you guys who you've been engaged, you've been married, blah, blah. When a woman exits your life, the only reason and the only thing that happens is she psychologically gained leverage over your life and your emotions. Since she can tell this, this is why she exits. So the problem where most guys start to backtrack and they're like, well, what did I do wrong? What did I say? Was it that argument? Was it that disagreement? Okay, here's the problem is it's not one thing that you did wrong. The issue is that it's a hundred million little micro nuances, mannerisms, facial expressions, Okay, sentences that you said, thing like it's it's your actions, it's how you it's like your body language towards her. It's a hundred million little micro nuances in personality that you failed that gave her a fixed identity of you, which means she now perceives you as lower value. So the only thing that this boils down to, truthfully, if a woman ever rejects you, if a woman ever pulls away from you, if a woman ever dumps you, blah blah you've revealed your sexual market value, you've revealed your SMV. This is why I'm teaching you guys, you have to conceal your interest, you have to conceal your intent. The second you reveal your SMV, it's lower than she thought. Now for some of you, you might be wondering, how does this have anything to do with generating more options or side pieces, quote unquote? We'll get to that in a second, so stick with me, okay? The issue when most guys get into long-term relationships is she sensed that the energy shifted. Okay, you gotta think about this at a deep level. Most guys, you're in a state of urgency because your fucking sex drive's so high, right? Your sex drive's so high, meaning like, you gotta understand this. Women operate their attraction on a longer time frame and on a longer time horizon than a man. So what that means is, well, you got, you know, 10 to 20 X the testosterone pumping through you every day just from being a man. But women don't look at things like you do in a state of urgency. Women aren't thinking about like sex or men 24 seven. A woman can go to the gym or go to the walk in the park and not think about men, right? So this is where the difference comes into play because she sensed the shift in energy. When you first met her, you were smooth, you moved slow, you were calm, you were seductive, you were in your masculine state or your masculine energy, you were charming and charismatic, you were pleasing to be around, you were an easygoing guy to where she felt like, hmm, I'm comfortable around him. I like this guy. I can see a future with him maybe. I like how this guy behaves towards me. Okay, and then what happens when you form that attachment? You form that attachment and you lose your patience. Okay, which means situations you're ready and willing to fix quickly. The state of urgency screws you because she sensed that energy shift. By the time she exits, okay, now look at the shift in energy. Now you're reactive. You're reacting to every little thing. Oh, baby, can I fix it? Baby this, oh, baby that, uh, blah, blah. Uh, uh, are you sure you don't want me to come? Uh, are you, like, that reactive tone, do you, do you notice the shift in my energy? I'm trying to move slower today so you can, like, really see this at a deep level because this is so, so, so important with, with women. Like, your actions and your personality dictates your sexual market value for, far more than your bank balance, far more than your physique, far more any of that, like, any of that ever matters. That is an attraction, those are attraction metrics that buys you 30 to 45 seconds to make the approach. Beyond that, 
dude, the internal work and the in internal guts of who that guy is plays a far more dictating role in how she feels about you. By the end of your relationship, well, now you're reactive. Now you're in a fearful state. And now you're super pleasing. You're doing anything to be so pleasing to her. It feels like she's put on this pedestal. So now here's what happens. Now you'll do anything to make it work. So before here, you were patient, you move slow, you were more calibrated, things played out over the course of weeks and months, and things were good. Okay, then once you start to de develop any sort of attachment to a woman, okay, her energy starts to change because your energy changed. So what I can tell you is this, when you're in that state where you do anything to make it work, here's what you have to know. Okay, if you get into a relationship, you must know this. And when I say a relationship, meaning a monogamous committed relationship where you either have a girlfriend or you have a wife or you have a woman that you're going the distance with, a woman's entire goal as she's with you is to try to take your manhood away. She's trying to slowly over time emasculate you because she's starting to doubt your sexual market value. So guess what? When in a relationship, her hypergamy, okay, meaning is he the best I can do, asks one question 24 seven. When you're with a woman in a committed, stable relationship that's going the distance, meaning you're with one woman, okay? Her hypergamy asks one question, and the question that she's constantly, and she can't control this, don't blame her for this. If you attach a name to the woman who's in your brain right now, Sarah, Becky, Linda, Kayla, Jessica, I don't care, it's not her as the person, it's her biology, okay? What's going to happen is she's going to ask this question 24 seven. And the question would be this. Could this man replace me if he had to, could this man replace me? Okay. But not just any girl, a girl on my level, a girl on my same sexual market value level. This is what she's asking herself is, does this guy, is this guy in my league? Am I in his league? Where is this guy matching up in the marketplace compared to all the other guys? So what do they do? <laughs> Here's what a woman does. What a woman does when you're committed to them, this is in their nature because essentially when you've committed, it now has actually put her in a position where she knows that there's a very high chance that she's the best that you can do. So what do they do? What they start to do is they start to attack your manhood. Then they'll start to attack your confidence. And then what they'll start to do is they'll try to emasculate you. So for some of you, you're wondering, well, how, how do they do this? How is this even possible that a woman would go down this road? Or how is it even possible that a woman would want to do this in the first place? I will tell you, they throw insecurity test after insecurity test after insecurity test after insecurity test. And I'll show you what this looks like in a little bit. Okay. They throw insecurity test after insecurity test. Now, after that, they're going to throw interest test after interest test after interest test. Every time you say things like, why is your phone upside down? Insecurity test failed. Every single time you, uh, you're laying in bed and you put your hand out like this for a handhold first, interest test failed. Every single time that you're trying to, like she, she knows you've went four or five, six days now without sex. Every time you're trying to make out with her and kiss her again, interest test failed. You understand how this works? You psychologically and not even psychologically, you in the real world now, when you've committed, when you commit to a woman, you are now starting to be at the disadvantage because it's not in a man's nature, okay, to seek those things. So what she's going to do, insecurity test after insecurity test, interest test after interest test, she now wants to see if you're booty whipped. She wants to see if you're weak for her. She wants to see if that, that one thing, that, that one magical little thing right between those legs has you controlled. Okay, so she sees if your booty whip. So what does this look like? I'm gonna show you what this looks like. This is gonna look like this. She gets home from work. Let's say you're already home. She's just gonna sit in her car in the driveway or in your garage for 20 minutes. And you sit there and wonder, what the hell is she doing? Why won't she come in? And she's just gonna stare at her phone. Okay? You, you guys can enjoy your relationships. Enjoy, enjoy away. As you, as you sit there and you want, she fucking someone else? Wonder who she's talking to. Did I do something wrong yesterday to where now she doesn't want to come in the house? Enjoy your girlfriend, ladies and gentlemen, because that's what you're signing up for. Now you go out to dinner. Oh man, look at this nice five-star restaurant that I just took her out to. Isn't this nice? Bottle of Cabernet, appetizers, bread. What's going to happen is she's just, she, what she's going to do is she's just going to leave that phone upside down the whole time. The whole time you're sitting there for the whole 90 minutes and it's going to vibrate. And it's going to ring and she's going to purposely leave notifications on and she's going to let it go bzz, 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 and she's going to leave it down the whole time. She won't put it in her purse. She won't put it in her pocket. 
You know what she's gonna do? She just wants to sit there and fuck with you until you say something. You better not say anything about that phone. You do understand that, right? The second you say something about that phone, insecurity test failed, interest test failed, scared to, scarcity test failed. This is the entire game in a nutshell. Now, from time to time, what you're also going to notice that she'll probably do is she'll probably, like on purpose, disrespect you in front of your friends to make it seem like you're lower value than her. Not to mention, let's add this one in here. Now what she's going to start to do is she's going to start to make sex seem like it's a favor that she did for you. Meaning there's no more genuine desire, meaning that there's no more actual mutual exchange. There's no more to where it feels like she actually genuinely wants you. She wants to purposefully make it feel like her interest is gone. She wants to purposefully attack your confidence, attack your manhood, and emasculate you to see if this gets to you. I understand that this is cruel things in your brain where you think, man, that is so, they're not all like that. They don't all do this, do they? Listen, this isn't a woman's nature. This is what they do and this is how they operate when you're committed to them, okay? So here's what I can tell you. Women start to despise men who close off their options and sexual access that they once had. This is the fact is women start to despise these men. Now, women get bored very easy, which means a high value, like man or high value trait to a woman equals a man has limited time, okay, limited time to see her. So if you think about the reasons why a man's time would be limited, this could be he's working on business, this could be he's entertaining other options, this could be he's out with his social life, this could be he's talking to other people, this could be he's doing other things, but the, the biggest thing you gotta understand here is it leaves a big question mark of curiosity in that woman's brain. The question mark of curiosity is what is he doing right now? Clearly, there is other things he is doing that is higher priority in his brain than me. Okay, this is why you're going to notice when a woman pulls away from you, it's not that she's busy. If she says she's busy, it's not when she gives you these answers like maybe or possibly I'll say you are busy today. She's not busy. You're just no longer a high enough priority. Okay, women would rather be alone than with a man that they are not attracted to at that level anymore. So here's what you're going to see. High value to a woman is not the same as high value to a man. It's not how much money you have in the bank. It is not your bank balance. It is not even your fame or your status. It is not your abs. It is how limited your time is to make yourself the type of commodity that she wants to compete for. So commitment equals routine. Now routine crushes desire. The more a woman knows about you, the less she likes you. Just say this with me. The more a woman knows about you, the less she actually likes you. So a lot of people, they think, man, if I just had higher status, if I had fame, if I had fortune, my life would be saved. If I, and you, you still might be wondering, you're saying, well, Casey, what does this have to do with having side pieces or other women? I'm going to explain in a second. Okay. But a, guy, a lot of guys, you think, you think having fame, you think having status, you think being well known, this is going to solve your issues. Okay. A woman could have Drake. A woman could have Brad Pitt. A woman could have Leonardo DiCaprio as a boyfriend or a husband. As soon as he is now a boyfriend or a husband, you have to understand when he commits to only seeing her, he loses his superpowers. What was his superpowers? His superpowers is this guy who's aloof, who's mysterious, who has all of these women after him, who potentially like is doing all of these crazy things in life. I want to be a part of that life. And then you know what happens when she does get that commitment? You want to know what happens when she does get to be part of that man's life? Here's what happens, okay? Since he loses his superpowers, high value men in routine with her are no longer high value because now they're in routine. He has lost the superpowers that makes him him. So this is what I'm telling you. You can be Brad Pitt. You can be Leonardo DiCaprio. You can be these guys, but you know what happens when even those guys would fall into this category? Here's what happens. You're going to notice her attitude adjustments, her attitude adjustments even towards a guy like this, okay? She wakes up just pissed off even seeing you from time to time. She wakes up just pissed that you're even existing. This is how women operate in relationships. She will wake up and she'll get disappointed and pissed off and bored and that she just has that contempt for you and she starts to dislike you. So you could be Drake, okay? And if you're, if you're, if, if a woman lives with Drake and they're in a relationship, here's what happens. She's gonna just wake up from time to time with her arms crossed and sit there and think, Man, this motherfucker making the same old toast again. 9 a.m. makes toast every morning. Look at this, look at this son of a bitch. Just walk over to that toaster. Can't he do anything else? God, I'm just sick of watching this guy. Just wakes up and just, yep, go, go make that toast. Do you, you understand that th this, is, this is what you're going to run into. You could be Drake with $100 million, $50 million, doesn't matter. She's going to eventually look at him and go, no, yeah, ju just another day. Yeah, walks his ass right down to that studio. 
I just, just walks, his, walks his ass right down to that stupid studio and just sits his ass down there all day, just gets sick of even looking at him. This is what happens when a woman becomes bored of a man. This is what happens when a woman no longer sees a man as the mysterious option that he used to be. You gotta understand, for women, this whole element of relationship, this whole element of commitment, this whole element of love and trust, you have to understand, this to them is all psychological fantasy. This is all frames of psychological value. None of this is real, okay? This is what you have to understand. It is her using fantasy and it's her using imagination to potentially gauge your sexual market value to know if you are high value or not. None of this is real. And the second you stop pulling the magic tricks, the second you lose your superpowers, that whole facade is gone. That is a woman's idea of love. Their interest is gauged based off their emotions. And this is why these things don't, this, these things do not work how you think they will in the real world. A woman could have this high status, high value man. You can be the, you can be a crypto dude making a millions and hop in this Lamborghini. Eventually she's going to fold her arms and go, yep, just hop into that lime green Lamborghini again, aren't you? She's going to get pissed. She's going to drive in the driveway. She's going to sit there for 20 minutes and just sit on her phone and not want to come to the house to look at you. And you go, well, what did I do? I didn't do anything wrong. I'm still in my masculine. I'm still in my frame. It doesn't matter. She does not, she no longer has the desire that she once did. So take this at, a, at another deeper level. It's a woman's nature to never be satisfied. She's always going to be looking at you saying, is this the best I can do? Okay. You can be, uh, you, you, you can, you could be Drake or Leonardo DiCaprio. She's going to sit there. Somebody's looking at you. She's going to fold her arms and go, you know, if he was just a little taller, <laughs> So your best option is to exercise the fantasy that creates desire. A woman is never satisfied. She could have 99% of the boxes checked and she's gonna focus on that one box that isn't checked. And you know what? That is hypergamy in a nutshell. So since a woman's nature is to never be satisfied, here's what you have to know. When you have other girls on the side that you see, okay, and you're open about that. I see her, I see her. You don't even have to put names to it, but she just knows that you're out dating. This triggers high value. This triggers a guy who doesn't get emotionally attached. This triggers a guy who doesn't build attachments. This triggers that she has to now work for this guy's approval to probably keep her place. She likes this. She can tell you she don't like this. She might fuss, fight, and holler about it even for a little bit, but you're gonna notice she just wants to keep coming over. You're gonna notice she'll start sending you those texts. Am I gonna get to see you this weekend? And it's funny how every single time she tends to show up in lingerie or super sexy underwear. It's funny how she always shows up in like the, the sexiest panties that you've ever seen. It's funny how no matter how much she kicks and fights and hollers about, you know, I don't like that you see those other girls. She sure comes in that best behavior. You see how quickly that comes. So here's what you gotta know. It shows you don't give a fuck if it's out of the social norm. See, this is the thing is men are scared to be risk takers. And this, these, this is even internal battles I've had to come to terms with because it's like, my whole life, I've thought about this stuff too. I'm like, well, this is really how I'd like to act. And this is really how I'd like to operate. But I don't see anybody else doing this. None of this is common, but you got to understand what makes logical sense in your brain doesn't make emotional sense in a woman's heart. So when you do something that isn't always socially acceptable, or when you do something that is against a social norm, she looks at it like you're a successful risk taker. You know, it's not even what you said anymore. It qualifies the fact that you did it in the first place. Women like these things. So it shows that you can also generate sexual access and it shows that you can replace her. Well, what happens now? Now hypergamy is satisfied. Now she looks at you instead of a guy who's right here on her level. Now you're above her level. It's, this is all psychological. These are magic tricks almost. This is, this is a psychological frame exercising her imagination that you're exercising fantasy. Now, I'm telling you that these things are not real because to a man, these things aren't real. We understand you are masculine. We understand you love routine. We understand you'd like to go to the gym, you'd like to track your food, you'd like to track your macros and your calories, you'd like to make your money, you like to yeah, work, 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 and get that car, and you're a big badass, and you do the same thing every day, and you grind, and that's why you're successful, and you're so cool. To you, that's real. To her, that's boring. She sees the world through a different lens than you do. If you want to make sure that you operate with women the right way, you have to consistently do your best and you're never going to be able to fully do it because you're not her, but you're going to have to do your best to put on the pink kaleidoscope glasses from time to time. The only way you can see the world is through the blue kaleidoscope glasses from time to time. You are going to have to try your best to take those off and try to imagine her lens through girl world. If you can do that, you're now exercising some serious psychological power. 
do you recognize the unfair and incredible advantage that you now do have over all of the other men? Most men, I, I hate to say this, but are not very bright. They don't see the, like they're not able to take a step back and they're not able to look at things for how they are. They're sucked into their little day-to-day -day routine and that's why they can't get anywhere. So now hypergamy is satisfied. So what's Casey's golden rule? Cause you know me, I got a ton of rules. Look at how many rules I write down on the whiteboard every single day on this market board. I've got rules and rules and rules. Look at all the rules that I have. Aren't, isn't that a lot of rules, a lot of words. My golden rule is this, if you can't replace her, okay, at her attraction level, meaning if she's a nine or a 10 to you and you know that you can't replace her within a couple weeks, a week or two, you got no business being in a monogamous relationship with her because you're setting yourself up to fail all of the interest indicators that's going to trigger her doubt in her hypergamy towards you. You're setting yourself up for an attachment and then you get hit with a smack. You get walloped. And this is where you get the guys typing in on the little forums and community comments going, oh, I didn't see, I didn't see this, any, I didn't see this coming anywhere. I didn't see this coming. She pulled back and I would have never thought she would have. Oh my God. Right? You're, <laughs> this is why. You fail all the interest indicators, you, you fucked up. So masculine frame, here's what you have to understand about masculine frame, because there's so many men where they tell themselves, if my frame was just a little tighter, if I was a little more seductive, if I had a little more charisma in my voice, you know, if I, if I was just a little taller and I was more assertive, I was a man's man. Masculine frame can't make up for the loss in competition anxiety that comes when you commit. Say that with me. Masculine frame can't make up for the loss in competition anxiety when you commit. You can go watch all of the YouTube videos online that you want about masculinity. You, masculine frame, cannot make up for the loss in competition anxiety that you experience. You no longer hold the psychological leverage. To girl world, imagination is the real world. To girl world, her emotions are the real world. To girl world, fantasy is her hopes of the real world. You are not exercising any of the psychological levers. Do you understand that it's taking me like, for those of you just figuring this stuff out, do you understand that it's taking me 10 years to figure this out? I have made every mistake in the book. I can come to you and make these presentations because of the sheer volume of women that I've dated over the years, because of the sheer volume of relationships and this fling. And I noticed this girl did that. And I noticed this girl showed up in lingerie. And I noticed this girl all of a sudden wants to do these wild things in bed. And then I make a couple adjustments and I do things wrong over the years. And then this girl doesn't want to do these things in bed. And then this girl, I noticed used to do want, wants to do all these crazy things in bed. Two weeks later, all of a sudden she doesn't want to do any of them. You, you, the sheer volume of putting in the reps, just like bodybuilding, just like lifting weights, just like anything, the sheer volume of women that I've dated, I can tell you I've made every mistake that I've ever, ever every mistake, every thing that I've told you not to do on this whiteboard, I have done. And I've done two, three, four, five X, X over, which is why I can come to you every single time and tell you these things like, don't fall for her appearance. Don't, uh, don't fall for personality traits. Where she comes from and background doesn't matter. Hobbies and interests is irrelevant because you can't change her hardwiring. This is the, the this is the reason is because I've categorized women as she's different. Now she's a little cuter and a little softer in her voice. I bet you she wouldn't do this. Now this one's a little more brash and comes from a rough background. Uh, she comes from a single parent household, but you know what? So I'm expecting her, you know, it's funny too. Those are some of the girls that I've noticed that they try extra hard and you, they don't test nearly as much as the ones who did over here. Like you gotta understand like I've had my mind broken in half 20 X over that's gotten me to this point. So when I tell you I've done all these mistakes, I really mean that. And that's why I can come to you and explain all this to you. So you like, I can hopefully save you five, 10 years off your dating life of going through trial and error. Cause I didn't have anyone to tell me this. I didn't have anyone. I didn't have anyone to, to sit my ass down and show me this. So since you have this, you need to take advantage of it. Okay. Masculine frame can't make up for loss of competition anxiety. Men need to seriously reconsider their definition of how women categorize high value because nothing pisses me off more than every Instagram guru, every TikTok guru telling you a high value man has moral code and ethics and makes a million dollars a month and drives a Maserati. And man, when you do that, you're so cool. It's complete bullshit. High value to the eyes of a woman is this, okay? All it is, is it's a man that she feels inferior to and a challenge that she has to work for to gain his approval. That is high value. And that can come at any age, any weight, any height, any income level. 
So the second that you have every box check, checked logistically, I make a million a month. I have two Maseratis. I have three Maseratis. I have seven houses and a swimming pool. Look at me. And then you fail every interest indicator test. You make yourself way too available. You all of a sudden lose all the mystery. You, you make a million dollars a month, but she knows that you just grind on your computer from like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and you sit there in your office all day and you're like the most stable, boring, predictable person and now she doesn't want to see you. Just like how she really had to see what like Drake had to go through sitting in the studio 12 hours a day to make all these albums, she'd think he's boring too. So don't, don't beat yourself up about this. This happens for every guy. Now, that's what high value is to a woman, okay? It, it, all it is is it's a man that she feels inferior to and a challenge that she has to work for. That's it. That's all it is. If you can check those boxes, you won. So then once you've mastered this, you can basically like take a breath and relax a little bit. So commitment relieves the tension that she stops working to earn you. So when you get into a relationship, okay, here's what I can tell you. When you get into a relationship, and I can tell you this because I've been there. I can tell you this because I've been there so many times. When you get into a relationship, watch her behavior get worse. When you get into a relationship, watch her test your interests more. When you get into a relationship, watch her desire fade. When you get into a relationship, here's what's gonna happen. The men that women often get into long-term relationships with, they treat like total shit. These women will start to treat you like total shit. And then what happens is you're gonna sit there and go, well, there's something wrong with me. You know, this guru over here said that if I'm able to, you know, if I'd have just taken her out on more date nights, this is the biggest bullshit sold to men is that if you just unlock the code in the right way, you can put the keys in the, in the lock and unlock the code. And if you just would have had the Rubik's cube figured out in the right dimension, in the right timing, and if you just would have implemented this, then you'd have this loyal, committed woman 24 seven that just wants to lay in bed with you and eat cookies. Okay. This is total, total, total bullshit. This doesn't exist. Because uh, like I've said, a woman lives life through fantasy. A woman lives life through emotion to girl world. That's real. We understand that that's not the real world to us, but it doesn't matter because that's the real world to them. So you gotta, you gotta look at it through their lens for a second. They treat these men like shit and then you can sit there and you can go, well, I'm just gonna watch more masculinity videos and if I would have hacked the Rubik's cube the right way, now I win. No, you can do all that you want. It, it does not like, Masculine fame can't make up for the loss in competition anxiety. So here's what I, what I can tell you. The men who now keep women on the side, every single time I've ever been seeing multiple women at a time, well, here's what happens. You get better behavior. You tend to get zero interest tests because she knows tomorrow if you got Sarah lined up or Kayla lined up that you're, you're got someone else lined up. She ain't going to interest test that because she's going to wonder if she can even hold her place for next week. I know you think this sounds brash. I know you think this sounds cruel. I don't give a fuck. Because dude, you gotta understand, they like it. Like, I, they like it. If they didn't like these things, I'll tell you, I'd tell you, but they love it. And you notice, because they keep coming back over. Every time I've seen multiple girls who wouldn't commit to a girl, it's funny how they show up in the best panties. It's funny how they show up in the best lingerie. It's funny how they're ready to get all handsy and start touching and kissing up my neck. It's so funny how that works. It's funny how they want to scratch my neck or give me a back massage. It's funny how that works, okay? She wants to rub your back all of a sudden. She wants to cook for you or buy you snacks. It's funny how this works, Matt, right? Like the stomach, like the stomach of her, like her stomach, her tummy, it seems to never hurt. Like her tummy seems to never hurt as you seduce her when you're seeing other women. Funny how when you commit, all of a sudden she has a tummy ache or her stomach hurts and it's a little, little bit bad feeling after dinner every single day when you try to seduce her, it's funny, but it's funny, you know, when you're, when you got other women on the side, it's funny how her tummy just never hurts when you're seducing her. It's funny how that works. Not only that, her energy level, <laughs> her energy level seems, her energy level seems never too tired for sex. It's funny how that works. I'm not too tired. No. Did you see Kayla last night? Did you see Sarah last night? Oh, you did see, oh, your bed smells like perfume. Oh, I'm only on two hours of sleep. Oh, I still want to have sex with you right now. Oh, uh, meanwhile, you're in a relationship with a girl. She can, she, she can sleep 14 hours a night, man. 14 hours a night. Just saying, you know, I'm just a little too tired right now to want to do that. Maybe tomorrow. If you like this video, hit the like button, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.